Hi, and welcome to As a Service Andy. Today we're going to be talking about the actual core of what As a Service is and what it means. And the point and purpose of this podcast is to continue to have a technology discussion about what it means to have these acronyms in there and what they actually entail. So when you think about what is as a service, since it's such a broad definition, it is what is what that is about. And at the same time, we're going to delve into a whole bunch of other software development items, uh, product management items, and other things that you might find useful, especially when dealing with the industry, the technology, and the acronyms that surround all of them. So it's educational for you, and hopefully we'll have some fun while we do it. But the bottom line is, is we'll be going through everything A to Z. Uh, it's really, yeah, A to Z um, when it comes to as a service, because there's a lot of them. There's, there's tons of them out there. And so exploring each one and how they pertain to what you want to do from a career perspective, what you want to do from an IT perspective, what you want to do even from a software perspective of what you want to integrate with, there's a whole host of knowledge that we'll go into. We'll have guests on a regular basis, so we'll be including those, and we'll hope that you enjoy this, subscribe to it, and maintain. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So first, let's talk about as a service. As a service is simply an acronym, so you'll see it as AAS, so it's usually blank AAS. And what that entails is, is there's some type of precursor. So we could have software as a service. You can have platform as a service. You can have infrastructure as a service. But it gets even more complex when you think of things as XAAS, which is anything as a service, um, or VMAS, which is virtual meetings as a service, CCAS, which is contact center as a service, UCAS, which is unified communications as a service. Again, there's a whole host of them, but why the as a service? What's so important about as a service? Well, in the past, in the olden days, <laughs> when I say olden days, it's always a relative term for me because when we talk olden days now, we're talking 2001, 2002, but even before that, most everything was done on-prem. So if you wanted IT infrastructure, you went to a vendor and you got that stuff on-prem. You brought that in and then you would have IT manage it themselves. You would have IT do all the work, and it was great for IT, except for it had a couple of different problems. One, when you have on-prem, you don't you 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 have to pay for the increase. So if you need more stor storage space, for example, you've got to pay for that additional storage space. If you if you want additional processing, if you want additional whatever it is at that point in time, you're paying for those incrementally. And software updates could have been a bear. Now, you know, with the advent of technology, the internet, and the way things have gone, it's easier to do a software update even on an on-prem solution, but still you're doing them on a one-off basis, usually manually, unless you have an automated system set up to go through and do all those updates. Either way, you're managing the entire thing. It's managing. So it's, it's really, as a service, breaks us away from that managed infrastructure um, to more of a uh, cloud-based architecture that has less management response, less managing yeah, responsibilities is the best way to put it. So with that, you, you, you get to walk, um, you get to have an ease for the IT staff to do what's more important in the business rather than just maintaining the infrastructure, maintaining the applications, themselves because it's as a service. Now, as a service gets broadly defined in a couple of different categories. As a service is typically used for anything that's hosted and anything that's cloud. Now, the way I delineate the two things between hosted and cloud is simply this. A hosted application is kind of like on-prem, but I'm putting it at a bigger uh, a data center where I can store all that information and um, not just store, but house all my infrastructure. It's still my infrastructure, but I'm just housing it somewhere. And it's really dedicated to just me. So I'm a single tenant user for that infrastructure. When it is cloud, then you are usually sharing. So something like AWS, and again, we won't play favorites here necessarily unless AWS wants to sponsor this podcast, blog, um, vcast, whatever you want, or vlog, whatever you want to call it. But you, you have something like that where essentially one server can serve up for multiple tenants. So multiple people can be subscribers to that and they get a portion. They get, they get bandwidth, they get uh, data, they get um, 
and processing power and you pay for that. And there's different ways that you pay for that and we will discuss that on, on, a, on a later show. But the point is, is as a service really alleviates that need to buy all and house all the equipment that you could possibly uh, have uh, at, your, at your premise location. And really since the pandemic, we are going to see much more of as a service. And the reason is, is as you look, as you look at the way the world's going to be working is infrastructure is changing considerably. And I don't just mean offices and whatnot. I mean, road systems, everything is going to change because we found the, I think it was 58% I just read, read on LinkedIn of the workforce, not management, but the workforce believes that they can do their jobs effectively working from home. Now I myself have worked from home for many, many years. So uh, well over a decade and from, for multiple different companies and I've always found it to be effective and worthwhile, um, busy, and you still have to maintain a work-life balance. And that's probably a whole nother conversation to get into is that working from home. But that working from home aspect really drives the way that we do infrastructure in a totally different way. Because the, the way that we think about having to go into an office and be present and having that person present uh, daily with the infrastructure and the roads, and, and here I am in Dallas, Texas, and Dallas, Texas infrastructure albeit okay, um, it's not great, it's okay, um, it just doesn't, it can't support, it can't support everybody going to work all the time. So there is a future, and I don't know, you know, this is just Andy talking, so I'm not sure entirely, but I would imagine that there's going to be a high percentage, I think it's going to be above 20% of companies are going to take the notion of work from home, and it's probably a lot higher than 20, but either way, they're going to take the notion of work from home, and they're going to they're going to expand upon that and they're going to utilize that. And that changes the dynamics because it changes. Do I have on-prem infrastructure? Do I have on-prem equipment? Do I have on-prem, you know, storage, uh, a data room, my 19 inch rack filled with all of my applications, all of my servers? Do I still have that? Um, maybe you do, but in that case, if you had a location and that's all that it had, Really what you're doing at that point in time is you're using that as a hosted solution. So it's almost, it, 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 it moves the line of what is as a service. So it starts to go in that direction. But you know, the, the idea of infrastructure as a whole definitely can be expanded. Now, it does mean a lot for the companies that are already doing as a service because we see that business already growing. Now I won't say every single one of as a service is growing, but virtual meeting rooms, we already know is growing exponentially. We, we, saw, we saw Zoom, we see LifeSize, we see all these companies that, that absolutely virtual meeting rooms are becoming huge and especially when they're done as a service. And so that is, that becomes a real, a reality that we have to face. And it's something that we have to go forward with and look at in what we're doing and the daily decisions we make, whether you're an IT staff, you're just a business manager or salesperson, or you just like the color of my shirt and that's why you're listening today. Um, even if you're just listening and you can't see it, my, the color of my shirt is maroon-ish, I think red, but um, any of those things could be, could be a reason. And so you've gotta, we've gotta take that into consideration. It's going to be critical going forward and we're gonna have some people, who have some guests coming up uh, on future shows that we'll be talking about what it actually means to migrate into an as a service. Now, typically when I talk about as a service, we've talked about the three areas, right? You have platform, you've got hosted, and you've got true cloud or multi-tenant. And those are three very distinct things. So, um, so sorry, the, the first one was platform premise. So you, as you go through and you look at each one of those, again, there's advantages and disadvantages to each one. As you move all the way to the right there, what you're gonna find is that uh, cloud-based architecture that's multi-tenant gives you the most value, has the most reliability, and is the most scalable. Where it can fail a lot of the times or is not as great is in security. And so they're doing a lot to secure more and more um, of those cloud-based architectures. And that's important for you to, to know because as you go about your uh, decision-making process or, or thinking about the future of what you want to do from an as a service perspective, security is a massive, massive ordeal. And it has to be taken into consideration. 
If you don't take that into consideration, then you end up with problems. Um, you can end up not being PCI compliant, for example, right? Or HIPAA compliant if you're in healthcare. And compliance becomes a big deal. So multi-tenant is great. It's a great value. Um, it's in most, for most companies at most times, it's gonna be a, the better avenue to go. The, the challenge is, is making sure that it meets all of your criteria and that's what you should start with. So a couple of items to note and a checklist for you to start with is, one, ask yourself what you're going to have from a workforce engagement, meaning how many people are going to be engaged on-prem or on your site or they're going to be work from home. That is one thing that you can absolutely ask. It's not the only criteria. It's just a question that you can ask. Second, you need to ask, how, what, what is my budget for this particular service? So whether that's CRM or customer relationship management, whatever it might be, what is my particular budget for that? And number three, well, who is my personnel to manage that? So budget and personnel are, are always really important. It's a, it's a funny thing. I, I'm in product management, and one of the things that, that I always say, I used to have a CEO tell me this all the time. He's like, I need these three items. And I used to say, or four items, whatever it was. And I would say, cool, you can have them. But you can have them good, you can have them fast, or you can have them cheap. Pick two, because you can only pick two. You can have good, fast, or cheap. And that's really the way software development goes. And this is not unlike as a service. As a service, you can have a good, you can have a fast, or you can have a cheap. Um, but you only can pick two. So fast and good you can do, but it's going to be expensive, right? So each one of those things that you have to, you need to take into consideration. So you could get value for what you're doing, but depending on the, the speed in which you want to turn things up and migrate things over, becomes a very, very critical issue. And who you choose as not only the cloud provider or hosted provider is also very important. Now there's several good options out there. We will discuss those on a later program because hopefully one of my guests will be a part of one of those groups. Um, but the idea is that having some of these different options available and thankfully we have lots of vendors that are available to do it. And of course, you know, you, you look at um, the big players, but there's, there's options for you. And usually it's the big, companies that have a lot of those options, the uh, Amazons of the world, the Oracles of the world, the Microsofts of the world, they have these options so that you can do this and you can scale effectively. Um, one of the other questions you can ask is, if I needed to scale, how fast do I need to scale? Um, and, and that's a big deal because if you have on-prem equipment, scaling that is not always easy because you got to find somebody to come out and do the implementation or you got to order the equipment and do the implementation yourself depending on the savviness of your IT staff. So that becomes a deal. Um, and then of course the software available for you. This is another complete aspect of this is what software do I have available in order for me to to do the things that I want to do? Meaning do you need customer engagement software? Do you need customer relationship management software? Do you need point of sale solutions? And all these, some of the uh, cloud providers actually offer um, some or have partnerships with some of those services already that you can easily tie into. Of course, there's always a fee, but you can tie into. And that makes that makes the, the, the changeover and the lift a lot different than if you're evaluating it by yourself bringing it all in-house and then doing the implementation and hiring another contractor or a business partner to come in and do that and consult with you. You can do that in the cloud, especially if they already have pre-existing relationships. And those pre-existing relationships are huge because you now know that there's synergy between those two platforms. And that synergy um, is awesome because they've already done all that hard work for you and now you just have to ride along with them and do the customization for your particular software. So this is massive as we look forward into the as a service model and what that is going to look like in the future. And I would just want to, with this first episode, want to leave you with a note. Again, my name is as a service Andy, and we'll be talking about all these aspects of IT, software development, product management, um, in some continued upcoming programs. But I wanted to just give you kind of a kicker of the rundown of why this is important and what really it's about because that um, is instrumental in you 
sharing your time with me. And again, hopefully I'll be able to give you some information. There's no, there's no specific, I won't say there's no, but there's none that I'm aware of. There's a specific degree that goes through and educates somebody on all the latest technology in the newest ways, always. I'm sure there's somebody's devised a program out there somewhere, and I'm sure one of our listeners can chime in and tell me where they would find such a course. But in the meantime, this is a really good way for you to you know, update not only the way that you're thinking either A, about your business or B, about your career, about where you might want to be in one of these as a services. And, and, and it's not just there, it's, you know, if I go into, let's say, software as a service, what are the implications of software as a service? What are the roles that might be played and where might my talents fit best in that? So hopefully you'll um, continue to enjoy uh, these casts one way or another and definitely subscribe like if you like it um, you can definitely comment on my shirt if you don't like it or if you do um, and uh, that all being said you have a great day this is as a service Andy uh, checking out